I mean, there are many statistics that we can point to of people going in for one consciousness altering dose of, a, of, of psilocybin and coming out symptom free, coming out cured, so to speak. Right. And, and psychedelics are not a silver bullet. That is like the caveat. However, um, the case studies and the stories are so, so powerful. Welcome to the Food Matters Podcast, your home for health and wellness. My name is James Colhoun, filmmaker and founder of foodmatters.com, and I am your host on this journey to inner and outer transformation. Before we dive into today's episode, I want to take a short moment to talk to you about the Food Matters Nutrition Certification Program, because studying nutrition completely changed my life. It helped me to heal my father get him off six different medications, lose 50 pounds and completely regain and transform his life and health. But the problem is, is that we're not really taught about nutrition in our schooling system. The medical profession is rarely pronouncing the facts of using nutrition as medicine. And we have a fast food industry that thrives off misleading consumers. So if you're looking to learn about how to use nutrition as medicine to either heal yourself or a loved one or help prevent chronic disease, or you want to take that next step on your study and nutrition journey and become a certified nutrition coach, then the Food Matters Nutrition Certification Program is for you. This is a 10-week or self-paced, internationally accredited certification program designed to take you through some of the most important topics on the and the latest research when it comes to nutrition and natural healing, including gut healing, autoimmune conditions, balancing hormones naturally, detoxification, biochemical individual approaches to nutrition, plus it brings together the best that we know about uh, nutrition science and anthropological research and bringing these two approaches together to help you cut through the confusion about what to eat and what to avoid for optimum health. To find out more about the nutrition certification program, plus to download your curriculum guide, head to foodmatters.com forward slash study. You can pause this right now. It will only take you 30 seconds. That's foodmatters.com forward slash study, or you can head to the show notes for more information. Have a beautiful day. Hey everyone, it's James here. And today we are going to be talking about mushrooms. We're not only going to be talking about mushrooms you eat or medicinal mushrooms that you might include in a tea or a coffee or some sort of herbal infusion. We're also going to be talking about psychedelics and their impact on consciousness and also mental health. My guest today is Ali Shaper. She is a spokeswoman, spokesperson, spokeshuman for the shrooms, the fungi, the fungi. Uh, she is the CEO and co-founder, as you can probably tell by the glasses, power <laughs> woman of Into the Multiverse, uh, which is an education ecosystem for all things fungi. Um, and they've also created a really cool some retail products under the label Super Mush. We're going to be talking about psychedelics, microdosing, macrodosing, healing, anxiety, depression, and in general, consciousness expansion. Ali, um, tell us, how did you get started in mushrooms? I'm sure it's an interesting journey. I think how most people get into mushrooms is typically interesting. So I'm, I'm super, uh, super intrigued. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm really excited to chat with you. And yeah, so, you know, it, the journey kind of happened from two different directions. And, you know, a lot of people, it's funny when I ask a lot of people, you know, what their interest um, is in mushrooms is a lot of people just jump into their most extreme psychedelic experience. Um, but there's a lot of different mushrooms that you can engage with. Functional mushrooms are non-psychedelic, um, as many people listening to this podcast probably know. And my journey with fungi has been um, both with functional and with psychedelic. So I started using functional mushrooms as supplements probably around five or six years ago, and they completely changed my health. Everything from energy to sleep to skin to gut issues. I've had gut issues since I was um, a baby. And so as a part of my wellness journey, I had a company before, um, before the multiverse and I was exposed to a lot of the functional mushroom brands out there. I started using them in my daily routine and just saw this revolutionary change in, in my personal health and my vitality. I stopped drinking caffeine. I just all of a sudden felt more alive. And a part of the message that I really like to get out there is that lion's mane is, is equally as powerful as psilocybin, you know, and yeah. um, lion's mane is just one of the functional mushrooms. So 
that was what was happening on the functional mushroom side. And then in parallel with that, I've always been, you know, we were talking a little bit about Mind Valley um, in the personal development space before we started recording, but I've always been a huge, um, you know, self-improvement junkie, so to speak. And yeah. when the Tim Ferrisses of the world and Michael Pollan and like a lot of the bigger names that people now know as it comes, you know, as, as re it's related to the psychedelic space, started really talking about and funding the space around, you know, I think it was like six or seven years ago now when it first started to um, become public, I started just becoming a student of psychedelics. And I'm from Missouri. I grew up with the D.A.R.E. program, just saying no to drugs. This was not my world. My parents are not, you know, 60s and yeah. 70s hippies that were supportive of psychedelics in any way, even though now they've gone through their whole journey. And that's a whole other, we can go down that rabbit hole in a second. But <laughs> um I just became fascinated with everything going on in psychedelic public policy. I started having a lot of my own personal experiences. And then um, what I came to kind of understand is that these functional mushrooms that had totally changed my health were from the same kingdom as psilocybin, um, which is, you know, revolutionizing mental health and had, had changed mine really significantly as well. So wanted to create, you know, a company ecosystem, whatever you want to call it, that really brought those together and, kind of put both on the, on the, on the playing field and, you know, wanted to increase education around everything that we're doing. And I can kind of go into like what we're actually doing as a company, but that's kind of the, the entryway that sparked my passion for mushrooms. Nice. Nice. You know, I've met a lot of people in like the gut healing sort of microbiome bacterial space. And, and one lady in particular, Donna Gates, um, she was super early on in the whole cultured vegetables. And the more I interacted with her and interviewed her, the more I realized that she was actually just working for the bacteria. And I felt like the bacteria had taken her over. You know, do you feel like with mushrooms, the more you interact with mushrooms like reishi, ganoderma, et cetera, and then, and, and even psychedelics, they, they start to move through you. I mean, it feels like that's become a big part of your life's work now. Yeah. I mean, like, depends on how woo, woo you want to get, but like, do, do humans run the world or do mushrooms? You know, like <laughs> if you really look into um, the mycelium network and fungi and you start to also understand like how closely related we are to mushrooms, we share most of our DNA with fungi. Um, we're most wow. more closely related to them than we are to plants. And you, you can really start to like understand that like mushrooms are the digestive system of the planet. If you know anything about the mycelium network. And for people that, that don't know what it is, the mycelium network is this interconnected web of fungi that lives under every step you take across, um, you know, across the entire surface area of the earth. It goes around um, 300 miles deep, depending on where you are. And it connects all living things on the planet, yeah. all living things. So um, every tree, every root system is all interconnected to this web of fungi underneath the earth. And, you know, to answer your question, actually, I wrote an article about a year ago around life lessons that we can take from mushrooms. And if we were to implement them as humans, how different our world would be. And those are everything from, you know, like create more than you consume. There's all of these um, beautiful behaviors that mushrooms have around my core remediation, um, eating, you know, mushrooms through enzymes that they could produce can eat, uh, you know, plastics and return them to the earth and actually like grow wow. food on the plastics that they then eat, you know, mushrooms are um, amazing. There's so much that they can do. There's companies that are using mycelium, which is that underground root structure to create leathers, to create um, alternative packaging solutions. Yep. And these are like big companies that are getting yes. involved in this space. And then, you know, from the functional mushroom side of things, the whole supplement and CPG industry is being completely disrupted by um, functional mushroom ingredients as you know, we have a marketplace yeah. that's focused just on that. And then psilocybin is an entire other rabbit hole. So I, I really, you know, I believe the more that I learn about mushrooms, the more fascinated I am by them. And I do, you know, very much want to be um, a steward and, a, and kind of just a conduit to like share their message with the world because they've really changed my life in such a profound way. And I share this with most people I meet, but they've been my greatest teachers. Yeah. Beautiful. Amazing. And I, I also, you know, ha, you know, there's the guys from, um, who was the mushroom coffee guys, Taro and that. Four Sigmatic. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, for yeah, Sigmatic. Great. I mean, years ago, uh, we were going to like this big natural health products expo every year and then some house parties in LA. And those boys were early on the scene when, you know, functional mushrooms were coming into sort of popularity and obviously Paul Stamets work super early, you know, and I, I take his Stamet seven. I took, took some this morning. Uh, it's currently w winter in Australia, but that I feel like there is this in incredible resurgence in, in not only plant medicine, like mushrooms, cannabis, all this, these things that were suppressed heavily, uh, in the sixties, um, with the war on drugs. And there was a lot of research that was happening at that time. And then it stopped for many years, but then a lot of people that have gotten into it in this phase, there seems to be an, an awakening experience that happens. And, you know, I want to jump into this early and we can get into more details on specific mushrooms later. Um, I've, I've had experiences, I've sat with mushrooms four different times and experienced some profound shifts in my life. And I'd like to know like when that was on your journey, was that early? Did that open the door to this sort of mushroom world? And I, I hear there was some sort of family experience, which I'm really intrigued by because I'd love to get my family involved. Um, and I'd love to just talk that I'd love you to share that with me. And then we can riff on like the implications of maybe, you know, sharing this with other people of influence. I mean, it would be fun, right? So talk, talk, talk me through it. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, um, you know, to answer your first question around, like, was there a specific shift in my own kind of consciousness and journey, specifically with, with psilocybin mushrooms, which are the psychoactive, um, you know, the psychoactive chemical and, and magic mushrooms. And um, it was, it was, it's kind of been like a gradual over time situation with like, spurts of like radical transformation every time that I, um, that I use them. So there's a lot of different ways that you can consume psychedelics, right? You can consume them in, in microdosing format, which is sub perceptual. If you're taking the correct dosage, it should be sub perceptual. Yep. Um, like I'm microdosing right now and you wouldn't know, you know, it's, it's not like you're tripping on a hallucinogenic substance or you shouldn't feel that way. If you are, you're taking too much or it's combining incorrectly with caffeine or, or various other things. Um, and when I first tried psilocybin mushrooms, I was, I was a teenager. And I remember thinking, you know, I was still in the mindset of drugs are bad, mushrooms are drugs, and therefore I should not use them, that they're, you know, killing my brain chemicals, but I was still, or, you know, my, my brain cells. And I was, but I was still really interested and curious. And, and when I first did mushrooms, I remember thinking, wow, I, I wish I could think like this all the time, but not have to consume mushrooms to do so because, you know, I still believe that they were, they were bad for your brain. And then lo and behold, I come to actually learn about what mushrooms um, and psilocybin does in your brain. And when psilocybin goes into your, um, into your system, you are removing yourself, you know, from your default mode network, which is where you make all of your habit loops and decisions. And if you've ever seen um, a photo of a brain scan of anyone that has psilocybin or, you know, another psychedelic for that matter in their system, you see this hyperactivity and all these neural pathways being connected that you haven't used before. And, um, you know, it's, it's really, really life-changing when you can come to understand that like you're actually, um, growing these neural pathways and thinking in a new and different way. So like, you know, a lot of people are scared to use substances and, and drugs and psychedelics because they're scared that they will, um, you know, change, it'll change them and lose, it'll, they'll lose their mind. Um, yeah. it will, it will change your mind. Like you are, you pre and post mushrooms, very different. And I had, I've had many experiences over the years that have radically shifted things about myself where I feel like a different person. You know, I had an experience recently that I really feel like a, like a different human, um, pre and post this one, you know, seven hour session, which is pretty wild because it's a really compressed, um, processing session for yeah. both healing and human optimization. So I talk a lot about the difference between those two. Um, so that's kind of the answer to your first question. And then on the family side of things, I um, am from, like I said, I'm from Missouri. I'm not from a world where any of this is understood. It was a very long time between my, you know, my family even understanding the difference between chaga and psilocybin. Yeah. So I'm very much not from this world, but over the course of me learning and educating myself around mushrooms, one of my favorite stories to talk about is my mom um, and my entire family for that matter. But my mom specifically 
was a very much weed is the devil type of person. She yeah. was not a proponent of, of psychedelics or any other substances and had a really bad experience um, with personal marijuana use and, and her college years. And um, through this entire process, she read Michael Pollan's book with me. She watched Fantastic Fungi. It was around like a two year education process, really getting her to understand like the fungi kingdom, what are functional mushrooms, what is what are psychedelics, you know, and, and she had her own experience. She's had several experiences now that have completely changed her life. And wow. it's wild to see, you know, my mom's in her sixties. It's wild to see someone that has had, you know, thought patterns and belief systems point to this being, you know, the most impactful experience of their life. And wow. there's not often, you know, a, a month that goes by that I speak to my mom where she shares with me, you know, that she doesn't share with me, like that she can't believe she would have died never having this experience. And so for anyone listening to this, like, I think one of the most powerful things for me has been to see, you know, my family uh, educate themselves and like come to support this space, but also speaks to the importance of education. This would never have been an overnight conversation with my mom. Sure. Yeah. And was your mom like going through anything in particular before she took these psychedelics at some form of a heroic dose, I would imagine, under your guidance? Or or was she just like okay with everything and she just had a, had an expanded awareness um, thereafter? It was a lot of different things. I mean, I, the biggest takeaway is she returned to her childlike sense of joy. My mom has gone through, my mom has had a really, um, you know, powerful but intense life. A lot of childhood mm -hmm. stuff. And I do think, you know, you were kind of sharing earlier, like our generation is this, elevated consciousness generation where we actually have the tools and the skill set to heal a lot of this, you know, the term gets tossed around a lot, but generational trauma, things that our parents yeah. um, didn't have the ability to deal with because they didn't have the tools and we're not taught these tools. We're not co taught consciousness and um, yeah. happiness and how to relate to others and love and all of these kind of like softer skill sets. And yeah, she's a different person. I mean, it's pre and pre and post mushrooms. It's, it's always a journey. You're never, um, you know, there's just, I think that it's a continued, it's a continued process from, from now until, you know, the day that we die, but, you know, childlike sense of joy, relationship stuff with, with people that she's had issues with in the past. Um, but just a general like reverence and appreciation for life. You know, she went down, she saw Jesus, he, he hugged her. Like it was the whole, it was the whole thing. And um, when she, when she reads Michael Pollan's book, she swears that her experience is by far the best psilocybin experience that any human wow. has ever experienced, which is really sweet. Wow. That's so incredible. I'm, I'm proud of you for getting her to that point. I mean, I've been able to lead my parents to certain levels and depths. Um, and that seems like the pinnacle of the pinnacle pose, the Mahamudra, the, uh, the ultimate. And, and, you know, I want to just express something interesting that happened to me. So I've, I've like I mentioned, I, I've been with the, the, this the psilocybin experience like four times and it was done in a really revered way i was with four uh, three other men we did all the same journeys together we all like did breath work fasting picked some crystals you know sat in a circle <laughs> like you know the crystals uh, are necessary least, it's not legit yeah, absolutely. You have the crystals. absolutely I, I think we didn't have a feather but that's more the ayahuasca vibe right but we um we wanted to bring some intentionality to it because we know that with our experience with other things that the more you can focus your intention on something and express maybe something that that maybe you want to work on and then sit with it it was it was quite a quite an experience but for me personally i was um you know i'm not a heavy drinker but my father certainly is so it's in my close sort of lineage and his father and mother were and they were quite depressive and lots of alcohol. And my father suffered a lot with chronic fatigue syndrome, depression, anxiety, you know, lots of medications and then alcohol. And he's gotten off the medications and changed his diet. Incredible transformation. He's into breath work and chanting and all sorts of crazy stuff now. And But he's kept sort of the alcohol a little bit. And I, I had it there in my life too, simmering, you know, like a bit of fun, a couple of margaritas and then midweek. And, you know, I just use it as this almost like coping mechanism. And just prior to the shrooms, I'd had a bit of few yoga, yoga experiences. And then I did the journeys. And since then, I haven't ever thought about touching alcohol. And it's been like literally over two years now. And I don't even think about it. And I have a few like alcohol free beers. There was like a big football match on in Australia last night, which is like a big thing. 
And so I like sat down and had an alcohol-free beer to pretend, you know, but ultimately I don't think about it. And then I've reflected on some research where they've shown data that one like round of a psychedelic experience can cure people of alcoholism at a pretty high percentage. What, what's your experience like tapping into some of that knowledge and research and, and where do you think the implications for psychedelics sit for not only alcoholism, but addiction in general, and then these types of, uh, compulsive behaviors that really want to, uh, we're sort of seeking to escape the human experience in a way. Yeah. So I guess just like to set some context for, you know, maybe anyone that's, that's new to the space that's listening and that's like, what's happening in psychedelics right now. Um, and again, they're having these resurgence. And I think it is important to note that psychedelics, um, you know, psilocybin and theogens have, have been used for thousands and thousands of years. There is a really interesting book um, called the immortality key that was released in 2020 that talks about um, the origin of all Western religion actually starting with psychedelic ritual. It's a really well-researched re book. The author has actually never tried psychedelics to avoid bias. Um, his, this guy, is, his name <laughs> is Brian Morascu. Like, I really, I really recommend that book because I think nice. a lot of, you know, the misunderstanding with this space comes from not understanding the history of, um, of how it kind of came to be. There are people that really think that psychedelics were invented in the 60s. Some were, right? Like mm -hmm. some, like all these different iterations, you hear like, you know, um, all the different acronyms that are coming into the scene. But um, the entheogens, plant medicine has been used for thousands and thousands of years. And how that, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of steps that we're skipping here. But what it looks like current day is there are hundreds of clinical trials going on all across the world that are testing psychedelic assisted therapy, which is a really important, you know, delineation and, and clarification. It's uh, psychedelics, as, you know, with therapy. It's not just psychedelics yeah. in isolation that are being used to treat PTAC, anxiety, depression. There's even trials going on for obesity, anorexia, um, really like everything under the sun that falls under these more extreme clinical disorders that usually are treatment resistant. And a lot of these psychedelics have been granted breakthrough therapy designation by the FDA, which is wild. And that, you know, that, that does not happen often. Um, that's why it's called yeah. breakthrough therapy designation. And um, what they're finding in a lot of these trials, like you pointed to one of the examples, but I mean, there are many statistics that we can point to of people going in for one consciousness altering dose of, a, of, of psilocybin or, you know, MDMA, which is technically an amphetamine, but kind of gets classified as a, as a psychedelic often as well. And yeah. coming out symptom free, coming out cured, so to speak. Right. And, and psychedelics are not a silver bullet. That is like the caveat. However, um, the case studies and the stories are so, so powerful. Um, it sounds like you've had a lot of profound personal experiences, but, you know, I have heard wild things. I've heard people going in to ayahuasca experiences with, you know, injuries or, or pain that they have experienced their entire life and then coming out symptom free. And it's, we're really careful, like, especially when, you know, we, we have a podcast within our company and like, there is this kind of moment where we're glorifying psychedelics, where we mm -hmm. also have to be careful to like, not overemphasize in order to like push them forward how great they can be. Cause there are some downsides, right? Like there is a lot of, um, yeah. you know, there's concern around different malpractice, pseudo shamanism. Like there's just with any industry as things grow, there's, um, some danger in the scaling, but to your point, it's really, really beautiful to see what's happening because people are going, um, and engaging with these medicines and, and curing a lot of things that they never thought they could. And I think what it points to is if you've ever read the book, you know, the body keeps the score, you understand much about emotional, um, you know, trauma and how a lot of disease is actually linked to emotion. And that's what a lot of my own journey I've, you know, I've been through that many times of realizing that like all of these things that I was going to engage with Western medicine for, which definitely has its time and place. Um, mm -hmm. was actually like underlying root emotional symptoms of things and, you know, micro traumas that you wouldn't necessarily consider to be, you know, a, a, a traumatic event because it was over the course of time. But psychedelics help us go back in and process those, um, those emotions and figure out where that lives in your body and actually, you know, move it through and move and move it out of your system so that then you can um, move forward without carrying it with you anymore. I think what you touched on there, Ali, is so big, like emotional trauma. I, in my later sort of documentary days, there was sort of a, a two 
uh, seasons of a, of, a, of a series called Transcendence that we filmed. And it sort of starts off on a bit of a food journey and then like a transformation journey with people like Wim Hof and Novak Djokovic who gave up gluten and became a great tennis player. And then Wim Hof who got cold and changed things and Jim Quick. But then it ends more with people like Bradley Nelson from Emotion Code and like Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza and really diving deep into how we store emotional trauma in the body and its impact on our body, on our immunity, on our health. And, you know, when we tend to think of health, we, we, we sort of revert to this mean that is sort of perpetuated by the mainstream medical profession, which is we are a sum of parts and we are a, a mechanistic being. And therefore it's a matter of mechanics to solve a problem. And we even take that into natural medicine. It's like, okay, well, if I have a problem with my liver, I need to take this thing to fix that. You know, we still of that much. That. But then underlying that, right, like you're saying, is this idea that our emotions are impacting our body. The Vedic system understands this quite well. TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, understands this quite well. We have this sort of energy pranic filled system and it gets disturbed based on emotional trauma. But then when people approach emotional trauma release, like EFT tapping, like Dawson Church or Nick Ordner, these guys are popularized or um, you know, meditation or mindfulness practices, it, it feels esoteric, even though it works. But then what I love about what's emerging with mushrooms is that you literally take something, it overtakes your consciousness and it sort of unravels a lot of this for you. It does the work. Um, even ayahuasca, I mean, a dear friend of mine, Nick Polizzi, uh, put together a, a documentary early on in the day, Sacred Science, where he took these eight people down to the jungle and, and put them on ayahuasca and had some pretty wild experiences. Um, and transformation so it's like there is this substance in nature that actually just does it for you it's like self-work and it, do you feel that way about mushrooms like it's just it gets in there and gets it done i mean it's so fascinating right yeah i mean you know mushrooms the mushrooms take you on their journey you don't take mushrooms on a journey you know and i i actually believe um, and if I look and I did an inventory of everything in my life that's actually um, helped me, it's actually been really hard work. Nothing I've ever taken, um, including mushrooms, actually for that matter, that has been, you know, a pill. It's it's never been like a quick fix. You know, I look at um, ayahuasca, combo, psilocybin, um, any of these any of these substances um, that you can you know, engage with. They go, you know, they they work in your system like even mushrooms, like you are working with the mushrooms, you know, and there's yeah. actually like a mindset around like taking versus working with that. I think a lot of people that have the most success, like realize like you are working in synergy with this substance to like go in and um, they definitely, you know, will guide you in this direction. But, you know, ayahuasca combo are two good examples. Like they're, um, you know, they most often cause you to purge and people mm -hmm. feel incredible after. Right. But like purging is not often, fun, even though it's like this, you know, incredible release for people. But um, most of the health and wellness things that actually help people require, you know, effort, whether that's diet, fitness, any of these things, like any of the quick fix, you're going to lose five pounds in, in seven days, pills or, or substances like that stuff doesn't tend to work. And um, mm. I think mushrooms aren't, aren't an exception to that. So even though like it is incredible. And if you look at the actual chemical effects and the brain scan of what psilocybin does in your system, it expedites a lot of this healing, which is why it's so attractive to people. Um, but it yeah. still is a lot of, a lot of work and the work can be, um, anything from, you know, like deep traumatic healing to laughing with your friends to, you know, I, I believe that there is like such a wide range of, of how, you know, mushrooms in particular work in your system and a really big fan of, I'm, I'm reading this other book right now, which is awesome. I've been talking about it a lot. We have a podcast. I swear I've mentioned it on like all the podcasts. I would love to have um, you know, the author on the podcast, but the author's name is Carl Hart and the book is called Drug Use for Grownups. And it's all about cognitive liberty and how as adults in society, um, if you are a citizen of the world that meets all of your citizen duties, that drugs, psychedelics, um, amphetamines, there's all these different names for them. Everyone kind of gets caught up in the names, but they can massively enhance your life when used responsibly and used with the right education, the right dosing. My friend um, Shelby Hartman from Double Blind, which is an incredible psychedelic magazine, said this to me and I loved it. She was like, you know, the problem with drugs mostly is from the fact that they're illegal, if not completely. And um, any you know, bad experiences that cause 
harm often are coming from people not having vetted substances because they're not regulated. Most of the substances right now um, in the psychedelic space that are consumer products are being shipped all across the world from a guy who knows a guy on like a secret messaging app, like Signal or something like this. Yeah. Um, and so I'm really passionate about there being a regulated market for consumer products, specifically with microdosing, because I do yeah. believe it's a, a wellness supplement. And that's something we're working on. We have a nonprofit that I can speak more about that too, but. Are you suffering from gut issues, an autoimmune condition, chronic pain, imbalanced hormones, and you just can't seem to find a solution? Well, you're not alone. If you're listening to this podcast, you likely value your health, your well-being, energy, and vitality. And at Food Matters, we believe that your body is worthy of good care and that there's nobody more suitably qualified to care for it than yourself, which is why we have created the Food Matters Nutrition Certification Program. This program is designed to improve and increase your knowledge when it comes to important topics around the gut, autoimmune conditions, balancing hormones, detoxification. Plus, it really has helped me cut through the confusion about what to eat and avoid when there's so many different dietary philosophies out there from veganism to paleo to plant-based to whole foods to wild foods to qualitarian, who knows these days. We have assembled some of the brightest minds in nutrition and natural healing including experts like David Wolf, Dr. Libby Weaver, Mark Hyman, Dr. Alejandra Junger, and so many more. To find out more about how you can join us on this program and become a certified nutrition coach to help heal yourself, your loved ones, or even help take this message to more people by working with people one-on-one -on -one or starting your own wellness business, you can find out more at foodmatters.com forward slash study. Again, that's foodmatters.com forward slash study. Nice. Yeah, I think, well, one of the big things we've seen happen in the US in, in many years, and, you know, I, it's been common in, in Holland, and I've traveled to Amsterdam for maybe 15, 20 years now, and it's just been so liberal there, but it was sort of not really heavily, like what, what Americans are great at is productization, right? Like, and so with cannabis in the US, the like the extreme productization is just insane. Like it's in mints, it's in cookies, it's in like, you know, these creams you can rub on your knee for arthritis. There's C B D bed sheets and C B D bed sheets, you kidding yep, me. Yeah, there's oh every there's everything. There's a little bit of everything. There's everything, right? It's in functional drinks, it's like and obviously you can buy flour, you can buy pre rolled, you can buy vapes, you can anything you want under the sun. And then there's like a company called Dosis, which I thought was interesting because it would have this like vape pen and you would inhale on it and it would buzz when the specific dose was administered to you and then balance different like THCs or terpenes to be for different things like bliss or, or sex or sleep or calm. And, you know, I, I just think that a lot of people would say that that's taken away from the, the roots of cannabis. And I think like, I'm with you. I think it adds structure, it adds um, authority and it, and it brings plants into this like heroic space of like, wow, we, we can adore these powerful plants now where we've been taught to push them away, hide them and, and incarcerate, you know, tens of thousands of people, if not more, you know, all around the world, particularly in the US, particularly people of color for small amounts of this product. Now it's like on shelves in like these big shiny stores where you go in and and, and people of all age are purchasing it. Like I see middle-aged women walking out of there, even older, like with bags and they're like off home for whatever experience. And so I, I'm with you. I really think I'm excited for mushrooms to go on that journey. And I hope that they, they also get there soon. Where do you think we're at? Because can we talk real talk right now? I mean, the, the, it's not really legal. I mean, it's decriminalized, I believe in Colorado or Denver in specifically, but, but where else in the U S is it okay or which countries are okay? And how can we just touch on that? And are you pro this like sort of productization control regulation approach to psilocybin in particular? Yeah, this is this is one of my my favorite things to talk about, my favorite subjects. Um, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, what is the future of, of psilocybin consumer products? I'm really outspoken and a big proponent of 
of microdosing, which is subperceptual um, usage of psilocybin as a wellness supplement. Like, I, you know, I take it to work. Hundreds of people around me have had their lives totally changed through microdosing. Um, and psilocybin is still a schedule one fully illegal substance. But where the legal kind of like landscape stands right now is in the United States. Um, it's being decriminalized all across the country. So in, in cities like Denver, Oakland, Santa Cruz, Washington, D.C., Seattle, Ann Arbor, um, Detroit, I'm trying to think if there's a few others, Cambridge, um, there's like a few other cities um, outside the U.S. decriminalized as well in certain jurisdictions. And where it's actually being legalized in the United States is in Oregon. So like that is the furthest oh. along state. Um, so in late 2020, there was around like 1.2 million people that voted to legalize psilocybin um, assisted therapy in Oregon, which is amazing. And you don't need a clinical indication to they're writing the rules for it right now. It'll be rolled out in 2023, but oh, wow. you don't need um, a clinical indication. So anyone that is a citizen of Oregon can have access to psilocybin assisted therapy, which is incredible. However, um, there is no current legal pathway, which is pretty misunderstood by a lot of people even friends and, and people I know that are um, operating black market companies and, and companies that are, you know, I'm sure you've heard of psilocybin chocolate bars or, you know, people that are, um, you know, sending these products around and, and selling them. And there is not a current legal pathway for consumer products to be legalized. And this group that um, we put together is called the Microdosing Collective. So we decided to form a nonprofit around this initiative. It's super early stages, but this group of people is really passionate about the same thing. And, and that is, you know, forming a legal pathway for microdosing psilocybin to start. That's the focus area of ours yeah. um, to actually create some sort of an over the counter market for it. Because like, you know, as, as we've kind of danced around and talked about the unregulated market for these drugs is actually really dangerous and they're growing at an exponential rate. But, you know, I just found out that a psilocybin product that a friend was using was made, you know, is being made at the same facility that manufactures opioids, heroin, fentanyl. And so the risk of cross-contamination, although like fairly low in theory, I'm sure you've yeah. heard about the risk of fentanyl overdoses, especially in combination with substances like MDMA, but anywhere you don't have a regulated market where it's like taxed and legit and legal, um, you're going to run into problems with people using the wrong substances, the wrong amounts. And that's what creates these issues. So you know, what this group is particularly passionate about. And we have some of, um, you know, in my opinion, the best people and smartest people in the microdosing space that are working on it. And we welcome anyone that wants to come in and, and join. The idea is actually forming a legal pathway for psilocybin microdosing in one specific city after we, you know, like build a movement. And that may involve also, you know, we're thinking about putting together a clinical trial using um, microdosing psilocybin for cluster headaches, proving the efficacy there, kind of like more of a, um, you know, like a pain, a pain management uh, uh -huh. solution, and then proving kind of the softer benefits of microdosing, which are everything from creativity to flow to athletic performance. Um, it's really endless. And, you know, a lot of people um, also don't, don't understand this, but the more that I connect with individuals, um, you know, across, you know, ac across various different industries, like most of the most powerful CEOs and, and leaders I know in the world use psilocybin microdosing or LSD microdosing as part of their daily routine ritual, but they're very in the closet about it. And what I want this yeah. group to be is an, you know, create an ability for people to kind of come out of the psychedelic closet, which they've, you know, a lot of people have done so on our podcast, which has been really cool. Yeah. Um, but speak about it in an elevated way that can really help reframe uh -huh. the narrative specifically on um, microdosing. If that, if that's kind of like helpful for an overview. Yeah, it, it is. Thank you. And this is my first public foray into admitting that I'm a psychonaut and that I have uh, come out of the cupboard on, on this as well. So thank you for helping me provide space for that, Ali. Um, you know, just to sort of like, we've covered a fair bit on psychedelics. And I think that it's an, it's a, it's a hundred thousand percent watch this space sort of area. I feel like you know, with food, we've done a lot on food now, like since Food Matters first came out in 2008 and then went on Netflix and nobody knew about goji berries or raw cacao or spirulina. It was not on the map, you know, and now 
you know, there's 23 different plant-based milks that you can get when you go to a coffee shop. You know, there's like vegan, vegetarian on every menu. Um, and that's a lot of change in 15 years, right? And Whole Foods went from, you know, not much to like super prominence and then Amazon bought it. I mean, it's like mainstream, right? But in the psychedelic space, I mean, and consciousness expansion practices and exercises like these deep, intense breath work sessions and even sound healing, meditation and these sort of things are super emergent. So I'm like right with you in terms of like, this is big and, and excited about the space, but just to park microdosing and psychedelics for a little bit, can we come back to just, uh, they sound like worse now because, you know, we've just spoken about the psychedelic experience, but just good old mushrooms, you know, like medicinal mushrooms, even, um, yeah. I um, hadn't, I've, I've supplemented with lion's mane before and I've, you know, enjoyed all sorts of different mushrooms and ripped, you know, big mushrooms off trees and grassed them up and done things. But, you know, when you see real mushrooms in, in real life, they're like scary because people are like, oh my God, is this going to kill me? But then when you see a lion's mane, I mean, that thing is like alien-esque, right? And it's beautiful, yeah. It's so beautiful. And then this guy's like, yeah, you eat it. It's great for your brain. And there's this whole thing about the doctrine of signatures, right? Like walnuts, good for the brain. Tomatoes, lycopene, four chambers, good for the heart. Carrots, good for the eyes, increased blood flow to the eyes, 20% after eating them. All these things. And you look at a lion's man, you're like, damn, that's a head with some hair on it. What's going on there, right? Yeah, there's there's so much to say um, about functional mushrooms and like, you know, what's what's noteworthy is like we spend 90% of our time as a business talking about and working on functional mushrooms. And um, part of the mm -hmm. reason why we're, we're doing that versus just doing, you know, psychedelic education and events is because I very much believe that functional mushrooms are equally as powerful and also the gateway to really understanding mushrooms as a whole and understanding fungi as a kingdom, right? So, you know, you kind of outlined it. There's culinary mushrooms, you know, the shiitake, the, the button mushrooms that you will get button in your grocery store. Chris Brown, yeah. The best. And then there's functional mushrooms and there's, you know, thousands of species of, of mushrooms. There's around 13 functional mushrooms that are most commonly talked about. We can kind of like go mm -hmm. into a little detail on, on those. Yeah. And then there's the psychedelic Please. ones, right? So um, uh -huh. just to double click on, on functional mushrooms. And also just by like way of introduction of functional mushrooms, I mentioned it a little bit, but humans evolved eating mushrooms. And that's not something I really understood. Like when I first found them, I was like, oh, this cool new sexy wellness supplement. Um, or, you know, I thought yeah. it was an ingredient that had just been like found. And then when you start yeah. to look into it, functional mushrooms have been used in Chinese medicine for again, thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And they still, you know, they, they, they just had a, a gap, like somewhere along the line, you know, this is a lot of what we talk about with super mush as we're kind of explaining why functional mushrooms are powerful. Somewhere along the line, they were removed from our diet in the Western world. And if you look back at the most vital periods of human development, brain growth, athletic performance, muscle growth, humans were consuming functional mushrooms and, you know, and psilocybin, depending on what, you know, theories you subscribe to, but stone date theory very much shows that our brains exponentially grew through the consumption of psilocybin mushrooms in the wild. And, um, they're a vital part of our diet. I actually was having a, a conversation with someone on Instagram saying, you know, well, can I take this for a little bit just to get back to baseline and, and then stop taking mushrooms? So I don't, and I very much believe um, that functional mushrooms should be a part of our daily routine. And they've been a part of mine for six and seven, seven years. And um, I don't really get sick. I feel pretty awesome. Most of the time I have a ton of energy and I really point to mushrooms as being my like powerhouse with that. And so just to kind of like, you know, I, I can break down just like a few, a few high level yeah, ones like, if you want to go into Let's them. break down some of your most, most popular, your, your top favorite, Ali's top favorite functional mushrooms. Great. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here it is. Ali's favorite mushroom. So, um, you know, I'll kind of answer it in the form of super mush. Obviously, you know, like we're biased. We created these three functional mushroom superfood sprays. And if anyone's mm -hmm. watching, they look like this. If anyone's listening, you can find them at Supermush on Instagram or online. But um, our energy spray, for example, has lion's mane and cordyceps in it. Cordyceps mm -hmm. is incredible for athletic performance. It actually increases the body's production of ATP, which is really essential for delivering energy to the muscles. And there's all these studies that have shown cordyceps helps increase antioxidants. It improves memory, even sexual function. 
can even lower, um, you know, LDL cholesterol. And then lion's mane, which you mentioned before, it's like this white kind of like squiggly, cool looking mushroom um, or fungi. And it is the brain mushroom. So it, you know, helps protect against mental decline. It promotes neurogenesis in the brain. It stimulates, um, you know, growth of brain cells. And a lot of times like notable here is that when people take microdosing psilocybin, it's often stacked with both lion's mane and cordyceps. So a lot of people when they microdose, if you're actually feeling the lion's mane, um, you will feel your brain light up if you take a high dose of lion's mane. And so, you know, mm. in our energy spray, we have lion's mane cordyceps. It also has rhodiola um, and some other really nice uh, superfoods and herbs that give it like a really beautiful flavor. It tastes delicious. Um, and as far as consumption method, you also want to make sure that you're consuming your mushrooms, ideally in an extracted form. So for people that are shopping for functional mushrooms, like there is, this is a whole other rabbit hole to go down. But part of the reason why we created the multiverse, which is our marketplace for functional mushrooms, is to help people vet um, the best mushroom products out there. Because in a very similar way to what happened with the CBD space, we're seeing people create products in the mushroom space that aren't using the right part of the fungi um, and not mm -hmm. the right amount. So they, you know, it's not really an effective product. So all the products that we have on the multiverse have been vetted for not only just like general wellness standards, but also for mushroom standards. And we call them our, you know, our list of fung yes and our fung no criteria. And then I can also, you know, just a few other, a few other mushrooms if, if people want to um, learn a little bit more, like we have an immunity spray as well that has turkey tail and reishi. Rishi mm -hmm. is, is my favorite mushroom. I've taken that every single night before I go to bed in some form, whether it's in a powder, whether it's in our daily chill spray. Um, but it is, it is the chill mushroom. It brings your body to homeostasis. It's also really good for, you know, helping manage occasional stress, fighting infections, overall keeping inflammation down in the body. Um, so, you know, preliminary studies have shown that it can help lower anxiety, depression. So our chill spray is stacked with um, reishi, ashwagandha, and then also turkey tail. Turkey tail mm -hmm. is fascinating. It is not made. Tell from me, turkey. let's let's speak let's speak about turkey tail because I know that Paul Stamet gave it to his mom who had cancer, right? And he she had an incredible experience with it. And he he's a bit of a mushroom guy, right? Um, yeah. What, what is turkey guy, tail? Sure. Yeah, he's the mushroom guy. But what is turkey tail? Um, how? you know, what does it look like? I've never seen it in the wild. It, obviously it's got its name from a turkey and how can you consume it whole or do you consume it typically in an extract form? And what is it, what is it good for? Extract. So any of these mushrooms, like you really want to be consuming an extract form, even culinary mushrooms, like little known fact is you want to, you want to be cooking them. You don't really want to eat them raw, um, much better for your digestive system. Um, okay. but turkey tail is an antioxidant powerhouse. So it has, you know, like, and, and something to note too, is like all of the functional mushrooms, they have like general benefits that all overlap. They're all good for inflammation. They're all good for mm -hmm. um, kind of like bringing your body to homeostasis, stress management. And then each one individually has more specific benefits. So, you know, the case study you're talking about is ta Paul Stamets talks a lot about how he gave his mom high doses of turkey tail. I have functional medicine doctor friends that prescribe turkey tail to you know, to their cancer patients in high doses yes. as well. It, you know, it can help reduce inflammation, stimulate the release of, you know, protective compounds, and also just has, you know, helpful and really powerful polysaccharides that help fight infection and help your body protect against certain bacteria. It also has probiotics. So the list is, the list is, is kind of endless with these things. And, um, mushrooms are immune modulating. So they function, you know, they, they work to adapt to whatever your body needs. So you know, whereas you may take uh, reishi because you're feeling kind of low and you want you want, you want a little bit more energy. Maybe I take reishi because you know I feel like I'm overstimulated and want to like help myself calm down. So each person, the way they interact with your body is a little bit different, but there are like general use cases for each one. Like I said, lion's mane, brain mushroom, cordyceps, yeah. incredible for athletic performance. A lot of athletes are using that right now. Uh huh. Nice. And when just jumping back into like good old mushrooms that are from the supermarket, like the button mushrooms or the Swiss brown. I actually sometimes love chomping on them raw, but you're saying that's a little bit of a faux pas, right? Is it better to cook them? Does that help activate some of the constituent healing properties in there or 
Is it more just that it's easier to digest when it's cooked? So raw mushrooms are like largely indigestible because of they have like a really tough cell wall. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's, I actually may be pronouncing this wrong, but it's either chitin or, ch- or um, chitin, but uh, that's what's the chemical that's in the cell walls of mushrooms. So like you should cook them. Yeah. Um, you obviously like will see some salad bars and things that have like raw mushrooms in them. Not a good move. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely cook your mushrooms and, and you will, you'll have a better experience for sure. Nice. Nice. And in terms of like mushroom foraging, I mean, there's like groups out there and people could maybe join local communities. Like what's your advice for people that are looking to enter this journey of interacting with mushrooms for healing, for well-being um, and so forth? Depends on how deep you want to go with it, right? Because, you know, it's funny there, once you start to learn more about mushrooms i would definitely recommend if anyone's interested there's an incredible documentary called fantastic fungi Mm -hmm. it's a really good overview of like mushrooms um and fungi as a whole but there are entire very very passionate groups of people that are dedicated to mycologists that go mushroom foraging together there's mushroom festivals there is you know and there's endless mushroom accessories out there on the internet that you can purchase. Like there is, it's this whole world, right. And it still feels very niche and now it's coming mainstream. And so like where our company sits is we're in between like the mycologist and the average consumer that's mushroom curious that we're trying to help um, bring them into the mainstream, get them into people's diets, educate people about both functional mushrooms and psychedelics. So I would say, you know, if you're passionate about mushroom foraging, there's definitely a group near you, depending on where you live. Um, you can go mushroom foraging. You can go to c- certain festivals. If you're just looking for like health benefits and incorporating mushrooms into your life, like, you know, we tell people, check out, check out the multiverse, check out super mush. Mm-hmm. There's so many products out there. Yeah. Protein powders, jerkies, tinctures, capsules, like coffee, there's granola bar. Like there's everything that has functional mushrooms kind of making their way into ingredient lists. Um, so that's from the, you know, the personal health side of things. And then for people that are looking at psilocybin, whether it be microdosing or, you know, larger ceremonial consciousness, altering doses for, for healing, there's, you know, a lot of resources online. I, I, I point people to double blind, um, which is an incredible psychedelic resource for, you know, people that are looking to learn, um, primarily and experiment with psychedelics. Third wave is also incredible. Um, both founders I'm really big fans of. And and we also are working on this nonprofit. So if you're passionate about microdosing psilocybin as well, um, we'd love to hear your story. I'm, I'm really passionate about just hearing uh, how this, how it's worked for people. Nice. And, you know, it's an interesting thing because I get the most common question I get on Instagram is like, where can I find microdosing? Yeah. And it's still, it's still schedule one. It's still fully illegal, but hopefully over the next, you know, 12 to 24 months that, um, that people will be looking to, to change that, hopefully this group as well. Nice. Last quick question. For those that are shroom curious, but more on the psychedelic side, do you think psychedelics is for everybody? Like, could we give it to Putin and he's going to pull out of Ukraine? Or could we give it to like people that are super racist or separatist groups and they're going to really calm down and become all love? Or should we give it to people that are really traumatized by childhood experiences or or, or in your just personal opinion, not from like a, a medical p- opinion, do you think it's okay for everybody or a, a, is it something that we still need to treat with caution as we sort of enter into this new foray, this new world? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. I would say absolutely with caution. I think that, um, I had a, I have, a a friend that's, that's working on some really interesting content in the space and he put this best. I really like the way that he worded it. He said, you know, psychedelics are for everyone, but everyone should not consume psychedelics. Hmm. And I think that there's a lot of education and understanding about what psychedelics are and, you know, just like the ethos of mushrooms that people can learn from um, without ever actually having to consume them. And also these states are accessible. Psychedelic states are accessible through breath work, through meditation. The brain scan is is very, very similar. If you look at the brain of um, someone that's in deep transcendental meditation, someone in you know, have a psilocybin or another psychedelic in their system. But um, I think that mushrooms specifically and other psychedelics can be a solution to some of the greatest problems that the world is facing. 
And, you know, I have, I have another friend that just wrote a book about this and, you know, they're talking about the state of the world right now. And a lot of people say, oh, are, are psychedelics a shortcut or mushrooms a shortcut? And um, they, they worded this really beautifully because they're like, you know, if you're in a burning forest and there's a long way out, and there's a short way out, are you taking the long way or are you taking the short way? You're taking the shortcut. You want to get out of the burning forest and our world right now in our minds, like mental health is the largest yes. problem the world is facing by far. One out of eight people reported have some sort of a severe and notable um, mental health disorder, anxiety, depression, and you cannot contribute your gifts to the world when you, when you are not okay personally yeah. and psychedelics are often a quick, you know, shortcut for people to get out of the burning forest of their mind. And our world is also quite literally on fire. So yeah. there's, there's a lot there and um, everything that we talk about and that I believe in is, is really tying back to mental wellness. And, you know, I just also want to make the distinction between mental health and mental wellness, right? Because um, mental health is usually getting people from like, you know, a zero to a five, getting them from, you know, um, the most severe can't get out of bed in the morning to in this healthy, normal state. And then there's human optimization and like the betterment of the well, or people that are in this general, like non-clinical category. And um, I believe that's kind of the mental wellness side of things. And I think both functional mushrooms and psychedelics are really, really powerful Um in that world. And they both deserve, you know, like we, we like to say a seat at the table in the wellness conversation. Nice. Ali, you're literally living, moving, breathing, walking, talking fungi. I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm super happy that you're working for the, the, the fungus among us. And um, so excited for your work to, uh, to reach more people. Uh, for those that want to find out more, you can check out Into the Multiverse or The Multiverse and Super Mush. Um, there's podcasts, there's like websites, there's products. Um, Ali's her name. Thank you so much for enlightening us with your mushroom experience. And I hope this is not the last time we chat because it's a, an important conversation that's going to shape the world for the better. Thank you. Thank you so much. More to come. For everything that we've mentioned in today's episode, you can check out the show notes. There will be links and information there for you. And before I go, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to invest in yourself and be here for this podcast. If there's anybody that you can think of who could benefit from this information, please make sure to share it with them. We believe in the power of life-changing information, and it's especially powerful when it's shared from a trusted source. And finally if you could leave us a comment or make sure to subscribe to the podcast we would greatly appreciate that it helps us continue to bring you this life-changing information and make sure that you get all future podcast updates sent to you have a beautiful day and thank you once again